The first thing that comes to your mind when you think about birds probably isn't that they're terrifying apex predators. And I wouldn't blame you for thinking that way. Most are pretty small and can literally be taken out with a single kick. And when you find one that can't be, they kind of look like a feather duster with legs. But things weren't always this way. These animals descend from a lineage of ancient predators more ferocious and cunning than anything alive today. Animals that specialize in all things death. Agile predators with amazing senses of sight and smell to ensure they would see you far before you'd see them. Predators with gigantic claws that could slice you open in a single swipe, like a knife through butter, and jaws powerful enough to easily crush you. Today, we'll be focusing on the largest of all the raptors, the Utah Raptor. Utah Raptor was first unearthed by Jim Jensen in Utah near the town of Moab in 1971. However, their fossils were few and far between. Because of this, when it was first discovered, the animal was somewhat forgotten to the history books. Luckily, this all would change when in 1991, a crew of paleontologists spearheaded by James Kirkland would make an astonishing discovery. As their team began to meticulously clear away dirt, rock, and debris, they unknowingly began to focus the lens of a camera over 130 million years old. And as that image became less and less blurry, the picture of an animal, bird-like, powerful, and more than anything, dangerous, came into view. And it was unlike anything ever seen before. Typical raptors were quite small, like the Velociraptor for example, which in life would have only stood at about a foot and a half tall, much different than their depicted counterparts in Jurassic Park. But Utah Raptor was different. It was larger. It was so large that if it existed today, it would be the largest land carnivore on Earth. Just to get a little scale so you can understand how abnormal this was, here is a comparison between a Velociraptor and Utah Raptor's skulls. As you might imagine, an animal with a head so big definitely had a large body to match it, and the Utah Raptor surely did. This predator would have been the largest in its ecosystem, standing at an impressive 5 feet tall at the hips, with an eye level reaching at about 7 feet. In addition to this height, some would have grown to over 20 feet in length, with an overall weight that would have rivaled, if not surpassed, even that of an adult polar bear. A bipedal predator the size of a polar bear might seem alien to us today, but the thing is, that they probably would have resembled a sort of gigantic bird of prey. Many close relatives to the Utahraptor have been confirmed to have had thick, feather-like coverage around their bodies, so it's highly likely that the Utahraptor would have shared this adaptation. These feathers would have been very advantageous, not only providing small amounts of protection from attacks, but also would have allowed them to control their internal body temperature, assisted in attracting mates, and maybe even providing camouflage. Regardless, while they may have shared some traits with other members of its species, Utah Raptor still had a very distinct appearance. Typical dromaeosaurs were built more for speed and agility, but the Utah Raptor, well, it followed a much different path, one that specialized less in pursuit, but more in fighting, grappling, and stalking larger prey. Thus why, even when compared to large dromaeosaurs like Australaptor, they were built much heavier with thick bones and muscles that made them extremely bulky and durable. These evolutionary adaptations opened the door for the Utah Raptor to be the apex predator of its environment, and have also certainly allowed them to hunt prey larger than itself. And opportunities to do so would have been plentiful. As mentioned before, they lived in and around modern day Utah just over 130 million years ago. However, back then, Utah didn't resemble anything like the dry and semi-arid place it is today. Instead, it would have been on the coast of the Western Interior Seaway. This was an ancient shallow ocean that stretched straight down the middle of North America and dried up only about 70 million years ago. Because of this, Utah at the time would have been full of life, with riverine forests, swamps, and open woodlands dotting the landscape. Inhabiting this diverse environment would have been an equally diverse set of animals, plenty of which would have been on the menu for the Utah Raptor, but the most common would have been the Iguanodons. These were a group of giant herbivorous dinosaurs that stretched 30 feet long and weighed anywhere between 8 to 11,000 pounds. Their herds could have been found across much of North America during the early Cretaceous. Alongside them would have been herds of sauropods. Their colossal sizes would have made them a lot tougher for the Utah Raptor to take down, 
so they probably could only hunt the young or the juveniles. But there is a chance they could have even taken down some of the adults, which we'll get into more shortly. Nevertheless, simply being large wasn't enough for the Utah Raptor to successfully hunt its even larger prey. For this reason, the Utah Raptor developed a set of unique and deadly weapons. Unlike most other predatory dinosaurs, who specialize in a bite to inflict the killing blow, Utah Raptor instead developed gigantic, razor-sharp toe claws on both of their extremely powerful legs. These sickle-shaped claws were nearly 10 inches long, and I mean, just look at them. They're basically butcher knives strapped at the end of their legs. And as you might imagine, these claws were deadly. One swipe could easily have sliced through the skin of even the strongest dinosaurs. Though, to this day, paleontologists aren't exactly sure how they would have actually used the claws when hunting. One theory is that they might have been able to balance on one leg while kicking and slashing at an animal. But my favorite, and in my opinion most likely, is that the raptors would jump on the backs or sides of an animal using their front claws and mouth to hold on, while simultaneously kicking and scraping repeatedly at the skin of an animal. Kind of like how a cat would scratch you if you touch its stomach but just with 9.5 inch claws. And even if this method didn't outright kill their target, over time they most certainly would bleed out, leaving them weaker and weaker until either they could easily be taken down, or just die from the blood loss. Anyways, no matter how they did it, these adaptations certainly made them phenomenally successful hunters. But there is another factor that might have led to their prolonged success, and another thing that paleontologists can't agree on. This being whether or not Utah Raptor hunted alone, or in packs or pairs. Those that believe they are lone hunters point out their relatively small brains for their bodies, claiming that when compared to mammals, they could have only been as smart as a bunny, and that there's no way they could have had developed enough brains to be able to form packs. On the other hand, people that think they either form packs or hunted in pairs point out that we're not exactly sure how dinosaurs' brains actually work and that there's relatively decent evidence in pack hunting in some of Utah Raptor's relatives. There's also some possible evidence for the Utah Raptors themselves, being that we have fossilized remains of multiple individuals dying in the same place at about the same time. However, this is still greatly debated. But if they could, this is where many possibilities open up, like being able to hunt some of the adult sauropods. In my opinion, they hunted in groups. Surely not anything as complex as a wolf pack, but maybe more like hunting pairs, or like individuals coming together to hunt the same animal. But what do you guys think? Could the Utah Raptor hunt in packs, or was it a lone hunter? I'll leave it up to you. Looking past all of that debate, and all of what we don't know about this prehistoric apex predator, I think we can all agree that if this animal was still alive today, that we would probably have to rethink our answer to the question, what modern predator do you fear the most? And with that, Thank you for watching, if you like this video please like and subscribe, it helps out the algorithm and my motivation. Now please enjoy some pictures and videos of my trip to DC, this definitely isn't because I have to make the video longer. Well anyways please enjoy, and Jayona out. If you're still here, comment below and I'm going to shout you out in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out.